It's happy hour again from Uptown New Orleans. Hello, I'm Grant Morris. Happy hour is part of the family of shows. On the podcast network, it's neworleans.com. When you walk into a bar in New Orleans and you pull up a bar stool, you never know who's going to be sitting on either side of you. What you do know is no matter what they look like, what they're wearing, whether they just got out of a limousine or just got out of jail, they're going to be happy to talk to you because that's New Orleans and this is happy hour, a cocktail-fueled 60 minutes of random conversation with folks who have nothing in common other than we're all New Orleans in a bar. Today we're at the fabulous Wayfair on Ferret Street. Wayfair is a restaurant and a bar that serves handcrafted food and spirits seven days a week. They have a three-hour happy hour here every day from three to six where bar food is half price and the drinks are half price. Are they your French fries over there, Yanti, by the way? Oh, maybe they are. Are they, oh. are they your French fries? Bring them over here. Yeah. Yes. Everyone can have a fry. Yes. Come on. Yes. That's very sweet of you. Yes, thank you. Come on. And they have some sort of a special like sauce that. for them too. Oh. Hey, listen. Happy Hour. Happy Hour is brought to us today by Nola Pens. The only pens that are made from a fallen Audubon Park live oak tree. <laughs> Joanna, get a load of that. This is a one-of-a-kind, expertly crafted, limited edition writing instrument hmm. that's available only at nolapens.com. Hmm. I think I want Marcus, one. you can try that out too, that pen, if you like. That's a nice I know, pen. I know my and signature if, might be worth something. Check it out. Okay. <laughs> if you're interested in lingerie, check out Basics underneath on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue. Basics underneath sells fine lingerie. And Basics Swimming Gym has a full range of fashion swimsuits, workout, and yoga clothes with style. Namaste Couture. Has one-of-a-kind natural gemstone jewelry, soulful-inspired clothes, and hard-fueled intentions designed by April Love. You can save 20% on all jewelry at namastecouture.com by entering the happy hour words in the coupon code. You write happy hour on the coupon code and get 20% off of jewelry, and you can get 30% off of Hangover Destroyer at hdestroyer.com. Hangover Destroyer is the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. So how about that? Go to hdestroyer.com. Yanti, have you ever had a real Aussie hangover? <laughs> I have actually, but things kind of got a little worse once we got to New Orleans, I can yeah. tell you that. You thought yeah. you were what a hangover was until you arrived yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, and then you're like, oh gosh, yeah, yeah. I know, you need some positive vibrations, thanks to the Positive Vibrations Foundation who create and encourage community through the development and preservation of the arts, music, culture and heritage. And finally, if you'd like to go to patreon.com and search for It's New Orleans Happy Hour, you too can be a member of our special Happy Hour family for as little as $1 a month. Andrew Duhon is back from traveling around America. Good to see you, dude. Good to see you, too. How are you feeling other than exhausted? I was tired. I tell you what, this coffee's working, though. I'm it great. is. I'm, I'm, I'm sharp. Couldn't be sharper. Do you do any, like, drugs to stay awake when you're in the rock and roll business? <laughs> Caffeine. And, you know, the gas station <laughs> sells some, but they're all, like, what's that, guanine and five-hour energy? That shit tastes... Do you ever do that, five-hour energy? Yeah, I mean, you know, like, it becomes a necessity when you're really trying to get down the road. You just have to make up some time. You've got you eight hours going. before the next sound check, and you got to, like, you got five hours of driving to do. you got to get down the road. Right. But uh, I don't know. I don't trust the five-hour energy. You know, I try to keep it to the coffee. You know what I mean? Right. I've, I've tried it before during law school, so sometimes it can get you through. Yeah. This is Marcus Delage, yeah. Esquire. That's what they say, huh? Yes, it's what it says on your website, or it's what they gave me here anyway. Our producer, Graham DuPont, gives me this piece of paper. It's got ESQ. I had to look that up. Yeah, my wife wrote that. It's your wife? <laughs> yeah. She, does she call you Esquire? I wish. <laughs> what does she call you? Um, we're just going to stick to Marcus. <laughs> Does she have a pet name for you or something? Uh, no, no pet name. No sweetie or honey or. Nah, there may be some colorful names that she calls me, but she those are not have nice. Like a nice name for you? <laughs> no. Are you serious? How long have you been married? For? Uh, almost ten years. Ten. And she hasn't got one like pet name, like honey or anything. Well, she says honey or babe or something like babe, that. Babe, okay, but, that's not. But but not uh not regularly. Not a regular name. No. Joanna, how long have you been married? Oh God, it'll be six years coming up in June. Six years in June. Six years. What day? What date did you get married? Are you going to put me on the spot like that? June 22nd. Nice work. June 22nd. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you got it right. I hope, let's okay. hope it's right. Yes, that's yeah. right. This is Joanna Hale McGill. It is If you're right. listening to this somewhere or other. Yes. Joanna is the 2018 Artist of the Year. <gasps> I was. She was. And 2018 wasn't that long ago, by no, the way. No, and then I was nominated for a new award this year. We'll talk about that later. Oh, well, my now, let's goodness. talk about it now. Oh, what is okay, it? so I was nominated for the new artist of the year for the Steeple Awards. So if everyone grab out their phones, get your phone. You got your uh -huh. phone, get yeah. your phone. Let's yeah. go get your phone, get your yeah. phone. And then you're going to go to www. How do you spell that? W. W. <laughs> w. Yeah, okay. Dot the Steeple Awards. So that's T-H-E. Yeah. S-T-E-E-P-L-E. 
It's awards. A W A R D S. And is this something to do with horse racing? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, a, it's an award show for gospel, independent gospel, and other artists as well. So when you go to that website, in the top right hand corner, there's going to be three little lines, and you're going to press those little lines. I can see them. Press those three little three lines. Cr- there and you're going to go vote, I take it. Right. And, and you're going to press votes. vote. And I'm going to be the second one down. You're going to have to press a little upside down triangle, and it's going to put the drop down. Okay. And you click Joanna Hill McGill, and you press vote. Joanna and you voted for Hill McGill. McGill. Yes, that is me. L-E McGill. You and can vote every day. Voted. You can vote every day, but it has to be within 24 hours. You can vote on all electronic devices hmm. okay. once a day. This so a vote idea. in the this 22nd and of April. What, what do you win? I win the title of New Artist of the Year for the Steeple Awards. And, yes. what, and what, can you cut us in somehow? On this? Can I cut you in? Yeah. I well, mean, if, if there's a cash you, prize, what? you know, I'll come back and I'll get you guys some <laughs> drinks or something. Okay, so there's something <laughs> in it. That sounds good. If we get all our listeners. <laughs> so that sounds good. Because we have three people listening to this show, at least three people. Therefore, yeah. there are going to be more. There's going to be seven. Mom. Is your mom in Australia? No. No, mom just arrived oh, here, here yesterday. Right. This Mom's is Yanti Turang. Is that how you pronounce it? Hi, everyone. Yeah, Yanti Turang. Yes. Turang. Yes. Okay. That's an extremely unusual name. My even father's for from Aussie. Indonesia. My mom's from Australia. So your father's name is Turang. Turang, yes. How did he get to Australia? On one of uh, my dad came to Australia in the 60s. Um, he... He went for a big award, like, I guess it was an award, it was an exam the that Steeple he studied. The Steeple Award? The Steeple Award. <laughs> and there was only 10 Indonesians chosen in the 60s for this award. And even, this is a crazy thing, my, his father lied about how old he was just so he could sit the exam, made him older. Wow. And then my dad got the award. What was it for? And it was to study in either Australia, America, Germany or France. And he chose Australia because it's closer to... Um, Indonesia, Indonesia. Mm-hmm. and um, yeah, that's how it. Well, what did he? What was he studying? Um, he just. It was just for a university entrance into teaching, I think. Okay. And the the um, scholarship is still offered now between Australia and Indonesia. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So, he, so that's how Dad got there. So he got there as a school. He's a school teacher. Yeah, he was a Aussie teacher and a teacher. professor, and then yeah, Dad's been wow. there. I mean, obviously, as long as I was there. Yeah, and right. but now I it's work in Indonesia, accent, so it's can I, cool. Can, can I just say that it's really lovely to hear a New Zealand <laughs> and an Australian accent next you to can each hear other? The difference just now. the nuance, you know. Yeah. You don't you don't get this a lot. You, you definitely know? don't get it every day. High no. fidelity, <laughs> you know, next to each other banter from New Zealand and Australia, really nice. Because people always ask me if I'm from Australia, right, and right, I say right. no, I'm from New Zealand. Right. Like people can't hear the difference, but. Right. Perhaps between there the two is. of us, you can actually tell oh, the yeah. difference. Oh, yeah. And, and at the moment, I want to say I am New Zealand because of how phenomenal the Prime Minister is there, right? Because everyone loves our Prime Minister of right? New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. even I say our Prime Minister, even though I haven't lived there for about 150 yeah. years. I mean... She is awesome. But unfortunately, awesome. it took 50 people getting shot yeah. Yeah. for her to be recognized. But you know, but what a leader. What a leader. No, no, she is cool. Brilliant. What yeah. a leader. Right. Mate. Is that right? What, so, a la- what a leader. What a leader. So listen, mate, how long have you been here? Do you know what? I came to New Orleans in <laughs> 1990, 1999. I was playing guitar, traveling around Europe, backpacking around in the 90s. We have a guitar right here. Great. I might play three yeah. chords. Yeah. Okay. And um, I met a boy. Mm. And I was like, mm. Mom, look, he's pretty nice. I think I'm just going to visit America. And this is interesting. I flew into Los Angeles. I was in Asia before that. And I flew into L.A. And then I got on a Southwest flight to come to New Orleans. And this is my first idea of what America was. Wow. And then I got on Southwest and I was like, on, wow, on, this is... Up. You literally got on a plane at the airport. You didn't even go to L.A. No, I like, landed in Los Angeles. LAX, yeah, and, and then I was there for two hours, got on a flight, plans. came to New Orleans. And then, guys, wow. I thought America was New Orleans for probably five months. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I was just like, America's amazing. It's like, a good America. This, and, yeah. then I, like, went to, and then I went to Louisville, Kentucky, and I was like, oh. And then I went to New York City, and I was like, huh, it's a little different. Yeah, wow. so, yeah. That's a great way but to But my baseline it. of America is New Orleans. Yeah. Only, and, like, purely because it's the first place I ever visited. And, so, and it's all because of a guy. And it was because of a guy. There's been a few guys since, you know. Oh, he's not the same guy. You're not still with him. <laughs> no, no, no. We're mates. Yeah. All right, so you're still talking to him. Yeah, yeah. Joanna, you're from here, right? Well, I, I guess. I'm from New Orleans. Um, yes. My mom moved to Picayune, Mississippi in 1992. Mm. So I went Whoa. to school in Picayune for... 
I think it was a long time uh, because I was really young and racism was really prevalent during those times. Mm. Racism? So, yes. So what year was this? This was in the 90s, 1992. Racism mm-hmm. was prevalent in Picky in Mississippi. Mississippi. I yes. bet it hasn't changed at all. No. Yep. So, Why um, the heck would your mother want you to live in Well, she wanted a better life for us. We were living in Lord Night War, New Orleans, and it was really, really rough and really dangerous. Mm. So she wanted to um, give me a better life. So we moved to Picayune in 92. I went to Picayune Junior High and Picayune High School, but it wasn't enough action for me because I was immature. Mm. So I wanted more action, needed more action. So I... <laughs> So I came back to New Orleans and I went to Dillard University um, okay. and I graduated from Dillard and I just kind of hung out ever since then. So how old were you when you moved to Picayune, Mississippi? I was eight. What, so what grade is that? Like uh, Second? Se- second. Second grade. Second grade. Yes, second grade. That's we, pretty- we really had, like, um, our white neighbors actually told us that we should sell our house to some other individuals that will enjoy it because we can't enjoy it. You know, this so in my this is in Picky, Mississippi. And my mom, she was actually born on a plantation. She was a sharecropper. So she was actually How um, is it possible? How old are you? You're just young. I'm thirty four, but mom's my mom is sixty well, five, like sixty six. No, this was in the fifties. She was born on a plantation. Yes, she was a sharecropper. She picked cotton. Yes, she did. Yeah. So that still happened in the nineteen fifties? Yes it was. Oh my god. Where was that? This was in Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Hmm. Why the hell would you <laughs> She got out of there and she got to she got to the nice Sound like yes. sharecropping what, going yeah, yeah. on in Rowan, <laughs> Mississippi. Why yeah. would you go back? I, I, I guess it maybe was the slave mentality. You know, that's what she was used to. That she was raised upon. So oh, it was, it was, it was, it was a lot to endure. You no, know, okay. but um, she has a. Do you have she brothers has and a, sisters? I do. I have. My, my mom has four kids. My dad has twelve. Um, <laughs> Papa was a Dad has slow. <laughs> he probably still making some more. Wow. Um, 16. So you have yeah. 16 that you know of. Yeah. yeah, that I know of. I went to well, school with one of my sisters and didn't even know it. We met each other at his bakery. Yes. And he was like, hey, that's your sister. I'm like, oh, okay, hi. She's in my class. Yeah, right, exactly. Okay, that's pretty good. And what, uh, what was that in Mississippi? No, that was in New Orleans. I went to Valina C. Jones. So your dad has a bakery in New Orleans? Yes. As a matter of fact, he used to have the bakery over there on Ferret Street right here, the Ferret Donut and Poor Boy. He was the, the donuts were his donuts. Al's Cajun huh. Bakery. Yeah, that Al's was my dad. Al's Cajun Bakery. He's been around that? for a long time. Marcus, nice. are you from here too? Born and raised, New Orleans. Do you know to, Al's to the Cajun core. Bakery? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm a Seventh Ward boy, so. Seventh Ward. I live in the Seventh Ward. Uh, it was a uh, Lawrence Bakery when I was a little kid. Oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wedding Cake. Yeah, you remember that. Mr. Wedding Cake, yeah. that place was great. Yeah, so that's what that's okay. what I remember. Right. As far as bakeries. I wish that was still there. Me too. I can't. It's a bakery it's, there it's still now, like but it's not, or uh, it's, it's not Lawrence. It's and, not Mr. Lawrence. And he used to sell this wine cake. Yeah. Yeah, you can get drunk at a young age off of wine. Wow. That place was so good. He used to have awesome king cakes, remember? Yep. I remember. So that's where you grew up around there. That's Gentilly. Yeah, not, not not far from there. I played park ball right down the street at Milne. Okay. But I grew up on Milton Street, uh, across the street from uh, St. Raymond's Church on Paris Avenue. Yes. Do you yeah. play the guitar? Uh, no, I don't play any instruments. Nothing. I played violin in elementary school, but, but that's Didn't it. stick with it? No, no, sir. No, that's a shame because we could have had a little jam session here today because <laughs> Yanti, Yanti was in a band. Yeah. Yeah. Andrew can play guitar. And Joanne is a... It's my only talent. Superstar. <laughs> <laughs> gospel singer and winner of the steeple going to be oh, the winner of the steeple oh thank you for claiming that for me already the winner yeah. of the 2019. steeple 2019 manifest, yes. 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 manifest. I love your t-shirt which is the same name as your record yes. which is one of my favorite record names of all time new read sound. that out new sound same guy go ahead how good is that <laughs> yeah. isn't it how did you come up with that you smoke a lot you, of weed no I didn't <laughs> <laughs> no I didn't smoke you a lot know. of weed it was the the sound of my music is not like the traditional sound of gospel music, but it has the same meaning. Mm. So I just wanted to give it a different flavor and a different twist to give them something new and forward to look forward to. Let's take a listen to one of these. What yeah, we got? Go what do song? it. So Which what song? One? What song is this? I don't know. It's the one you sang. What is I it? I sang. A- <laughs> <laughs> what are we listening to? Which one do you have? Uh, let's do anything. Thomas? Okay, so Anything yeah. was uh, the jingle for the Tom Joyner morning show that we turned into a single. So it was actually... You wrote the, hang, wait, wait, wait. You wrote, <laughs> this, you wrote the jingle for the Tom Joyner. So when I won this contest that I won, part of the winnings was I got to record a song with Diedrich Hatton, and I got to do a jingle for the Tom Joyner morning show. So his producer, he did the jingle, we recorded the jingle, and we turned the jingle into a single, mm. which is entitled oh, I Can Do Anything. Okay, so here's the... 
<laughs> I'm not. Do you have a lawyer, by the way? <laughs> I don't have a lawyer. No. Well, if you one. need one, you Marcus, need one. I got it. We will connect. Okay, so yes. Marcus, we, we can take care. What's yes. the first question you have about that? She writes a jingle, first of all, for free, I suppose. For the well, he, his producer wrote the jingle. His jingle man did the jingle. Okay. I just the vocals on oh, the jingle. Just oh. Yes, but okay, I wrote. So I wrote the. It? I spoke the second part of it to make it a single. I mean, okay. she, she brought life into it. You know, right. you got to get paid for it. So that. that's, that's what I'm thinking. Right, get paid for it. So who owns it? I own part of it because I wrote the second part of it, so I own part of it, but not all of it. Okay. Yes. Is that all sorted out before we play this? Yes, it's sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, you're going to double We actually yeah. split. I'm, I sell the going to have CDs. to give that disclaimer, like, look, I don't own the rights to this music. No, I, own, I, I own the rights to this here music. You do? Yes. Okay, that's fine. So it's called Anything. Anything. Okay. All right. Here I it can't is. wait. Here it is. Let's see. Where is it? Can we hear it? Let's see. You sound the same God. I guess I'm supposed to sing it too, huh? Uh, if you would like to sing, is it loud enough? Mm -hmm, I can hear it. See, it's not the traditional sound, the beat. Oh, so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. This is so funny. I love it. Oh, he's on beat. I love it. Woke up this morning ooh, with the sun shining on my face. What a good feeling to have the gift of another day. I felt down on my knees as I began to pray. That's when I heard my father say, I can't do anything. No, oh, oh. Yes, I got no limits. I, I can do anything I put my heart to I can do anything oh, oh, oh. Just put your foot in it And I know with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost I can do anything You can do anything We can do anything It's my savior, Ooh, and he keeps a smile on my face. He's my protector. He gives us love and his saving grace. Just fall down on your knees and lift your hands in praise. You will hear your father say, "You can do anything." Oh, oh, oh. yeah. You got no limits. Ha, you can do what anything. You And the Holy Ghost, He can do, I can do, you can do, we can do anything. You got no limits. Ha, you can do anything. I do. I put your heart to. I can do anything. Oh, oh. Say, I can't do anything. Say, I can't do anything. <laughs> I can't do anything. Oh, yes. Anything, 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 anything. We can't do. I can't do anything. And that's how I can do anything. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And the listeners need to know that that was live. That wasn't a record. That was, like, yeah, that was live. That girl that was that awesome. in front of our face. That's right, right here. That is amazing. Oh my God. How do you feel after doing that? Uh, I'm hot. hot. I'm burning it up. Hot in here. Burning up. Sweating. What? Out my good hair. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you meant it. That is such an uplifting thing to be able to I know, listen to. I felt to. like I was, was in nice. a trance. That was nice. Yeah. That was great. That was awesome. Thank you. How do you learn to sing like that? Did you... My mother is a singer. Um, yeah. So I got it from her, mm. but she's definitely my mother is a singer. Right. My whole family pretty much they sing. My aunt's a singer. Mm. My sister does poetry. She can't sing with the lick, but she writes poetry. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Man, that was impressive. Thank you. 
Thank you. So you've been doing this your whole life? My whole life, you yes. You started off as a kid singer. I didn't have a choice. Uh, she, she used to sing with different gospel groups, so she dragged me all over the city with her to sing at a bunch of different churches and stuff. So then sometimes I would uh, bribe her. I'm like, so I'll sing if you buy me some McDonald's. Mm. Um, <laughs> and I wouldn't move until she agreed to buy me McDonald's. You were your own business manager yes. back then. That's great. Yes, you know, you got to yes, yes, demand yes. the hospitality. <laughs> Did you, did you get any bit of respect in picking in Mississippi because you I did sense? I did. Um, I actually went back the, two years ago and did a community give back. I shot my first um, music video in Picayune. I did. I fed the whole community. We had like a big fish fry on Good Friday. <laughs> so that made, the, that made the paper. They were like, oh, my God, the superstar is here. And I'm like, no, I'm just regular Joanna. That's it. No. <laughs> so but these they are all do. these racist people that hated you. Not all of them are, but no, a but lot the of ones them are. who were. Makes me so mad. That is crazy. Did you ever think about shooting them? Uh, no, because I like my freedom. I don't look good in orange. Don't look good in orange. Right. Nor stripes. Did it ever cross your mind, though? It, it crossed my mind as to why. Like, mm. we all bleed the same blood. Right. You know, we're all human. Just because my skin color is different from yours, why should I be treated any differently? Right. You know, but then that same person you hate might be the person that actually has to give you a transplant or something mm. when you're on your dying bed. Nice. That would be great if you do, and then you could refuse to do it. <laughs> Should have been nice to you. Yeah, Should have thought to about love. that. Have you seen you able to get over all this sort of thing? I am. Because I, of, I am. Because of you or because of Jesus? Because of Jesus. And mm -hmm. a lot of people, it's because of ignorance. They don't know. Some of them, that's how they were raised. Mm -hmm. So when they're yeah, they raised... they understand. They can't see beyond when, what they... When they're raised that way and you try to show them a different way, they're so ignorant and they're so blinded by the things that have been going on. Yep. Like sometimes it, it scares me to let my, my daughter go places, to go spend the night at someone's house because I don't know their parents. I mean, I, I don't know. So I would hate to have to um, do something bad. <laughs> if my child comes back home and says, Something you know, hey, happened. mommy, I was the only black girl at the party and they mm. treated me differently. Mm. You know, so those those kind of things, are, it's, it's unfortunate, but we do have to worry about that now. Mm. It's unfortunate. Still, still. We're still worrying about that. Yeah. Yanti, you work with people in Indonesia, right? Even, so yes. Your dad is Indonesian. My and dad's you've gone Indonesian, back Indonesia. and then grew up in Australia, and... Jenna, I can understand. I grew up, so my dad's Indonesian, I'm half Australian. And growing up in Australia, Australians are very racist against people who were not white. Um, and it was against Asians. A lot of Asians comes from like my father and a lot of people from Asia would come. And so it's growing up in a small town of five or 6,000 people, I felt like that, you know, it's that horrible thing of like, oh, I have to assimilate to feel like I belong instead of being proud of like, hey, I'm mixed race right. and this is who I am. What town was this? It's a small country town called Kyneton. I mean, I had a great upbringing and my parents would kick ass and like, it was awesome. What did you say the name of the town? Kyneton. 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 How do you spell that? K-Y-N-E-T-O-N. K-Y-N-E-T-O-N. Kyneton. Yeah. Wow. I but uh, yeah, right. oh, it's a small little town outside of Melbourne, and I love it. But um, I think early on in my life, like with my parents, my dad being Indonesian, us traveling to Indonesia, us understanding that there was more to life than, you know, like perspective, like we got perspective young. I knew that there was more out there in the world. And so we were fortunate to go back and forth to Indonesia, and then, you know, being sort of transient myself ended up in New Orleans and but you had to get out of Australia basically. I had to get out Just I got out I got out, of, to get out of Picayune. yeah and you like I had get to get out but I'm places. happy to go back and like and not live there and not, <laughs> and not live there right. but I think the most important thing was that like I got out and that I started my organization called learn to live like out of New Orleans because one wonderful thing that New Orleans, and actually for everyone in America, is America means, is there's this level of optimism that happens in America. And I know that there's a lot of turmoil that happens in the United States, like we see it in the media. But you guys are really optimistic people mm. and really positive when you meet people and when you hear their stories. And so that's kind of like what I've held on to in the United States and why I love living here and especially New Orleans. And yeah, I kind of took that and like had the idea for my organization to do health and water work in Indonesia where my father's from. And yeah, so I'm always in Indonesia and then we work in Kenya as well. 
and we also work in Laos, and we have worked in South Africa. And so, yeah, I'm around the world quite a lot. So, so you're a professional, what's the word for it? Charity worker? Um, <laughs> I'm an executive director <laughs> of my organization, but uh, what yeah. Do you, what do you describe yourself as when someone says, what do you do? Oh, someone who gives a shit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> people, that's a good thing about New Orleans is people don't ask you what you do all that yeah, often. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to be like, this is my mission and this is my dream. I mean, I really, I really believe people in the world. It just happens that you were born somewhere or that you had a different color skin or you look different in the face. Like, it, there's, there's no rhyme or reason, and yet, you know, the human race creates these prejudices and like classism and all that sort of stuff and gives people like limited access to stuff and so with my organization I was like we got to level this playing field like yeah but everybody in the whole world sees all these things we all see injustice and we all see people starving and going yeah. hungry and so on but most people don't do anything about it what made you do something about it I think because when I was young I went to Indonesia and I my own family members were dying of preventable disease mm. you know and they're not the, not the communities we're living in and working in Indonesia, like not remote communities, but family members who've been to university who are like middle class Indonesian. And it was, you know, it was like occurring to me and then they, were, they didn't have clean drinking water. And Why don't they have clean drinking water? And because of the lack of infrastructure, the GDP is so much lower. So tell us about Indonesia, because isn't it a gigantic country with right. million, millions of people? Like the fourth largest country in the world. It's the fourth largest country in the world. So or it why could be the fifth. Or look at that. Because you know <laughs> what? So imagine what? this. The population of Indonesia is on a landmass the size of California and, like, Oregon. I can't imagine. Is that big? And yes, it's, like, 17,000 islands, though. 17,000 islands? Wow. Yeah. And so... That sounds like an But American it's, like, Express a huge commercial. population and it's a huge, like, economy that... Uh, well, okay, so wait up then. That's what I'm just getting at. If it's the fourth or fifth largest country in the world... Why can't they get it together so that people have enough water to drink or medicine? Because their GDP and their finances and they're not the colour of the skin that's leading the world right now. Well, never mind. I don't even know what colour of skin are they. Why does that same thing happen in Flint, Michigan? About to say, like, we, 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 in America, we can't provide clean drinking water for everyone. Right. And you saw the, the green and brown in, in Flint. And, yeah. uh, I mean, sure. you know, obviously that's a, a predominantly that's a African-American uh, city. And uh, but but Yanti is having the same problem in New Zealand with people of color. Hey, so this is not New Zealand, Indonesia. Indonesia. I'm sorry, there's Indonesia. plenty of drinking water in New Zealand. So, so this is uh, it's, it's almost systemic. It's uh, systemic, but worldwide. Mm. But, yeah. what, but but if it's a gigantic country, what are they? Where does the GDP come from? What do they do in Indonesia? I mean, like they're subsistence farmers. Majority of Indonesia, most people don't have electricity. Eighty really? percent of people don't have running water, clean 80, drinking water. Eighty percent of but, the fourth or fifth largest country in the world doesn't but have people, running water. But these people just happen, like they're not like, hey, we're deciding to live in Indonesia. People were just born where they're born into governments and into borders where they're born. And but I know this sounds. Totally like American, but wouldn't someone make a huge amount of money out of selling water to people who are in the fifth largest country in the world and don't have any yeah, water? Yeah, but what if your income is only forty dollars a month? But wouldn't someone figure out how to lay pipes and put in pumping stations? Well, you would hope you would hope that some what? of the richest economies in yeah. the world would do that, so right? So why isn't that happening? Well, why did like things take so long in New Orleans to come back? Why did um, things in Syria like? I think it's the same reason why my college roommate hasn't paid me back that 500 bucks. Because <laughs> every time you find that 500 bucks, you got another you reason to spend it somewhere else. else. Yeah. And people yeah. want to keep it for themselves, and governments want but to keep it for themselves. Is there? Are that, is that what's happening? Is it corruption, and uh, is the country being exploited by other countries? I mean, I would say so, and I think there's a desperation when there's no like fundamental like living needs, like electricity and water, that drive people to like just take care of themselves and do everything they can for themselves and I'm sure the people at the top like the one percent are taking a lot of those funds but I mean hmm. Indonesia has a lot of challenges that a country that has like a complete landmass doesn't have like there's 17,000 islands which makes up the entire country yeah. must be pretty interesting yeah actually. so I mean there's a lot of yeah it's pretty wild are there are there economic opportunities there if you had an idea for a business of some sort are there things there that aren't being exploited um, I mean, I think there's always people, there's an entrepreneurial 
Well, the entrepreneurial spirit of Indonesia is coming through. Like, they've just come out of a very oppressive government for 30 years by Suharto. And so Suharto was like, if you don't think like me, we're either going to kill you or we're going to shut you and your family down. And so that's like when, like, it comes out of kleptocratic governments, like, it just, like, stunts progress. We're only a heartbeat yeah. away from that here, quite frankly. <laughs> I've got a question for you about this whole thing, Joanna, in just Go a minute. But first minute. First, we're going to take a very quick break. And we're going to be right back awesome. after this. We'll be right back after this, yeah. How would Tom Joyner do that? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's nice. Okay. Heads up, denim lovers. Old Navy's biggest denim sale ever is here. All jeans are on sale up to 60% off. Style started just 12 bucks for adults, 8 bucks for kids. Plus, this Saturday and Sunday only, don't miss the Gina Day giveaway. Want a free pair of Old Navy's all-new jeans? Stop in for your chance to win. And for up to 60% off, all jeans, now at Old Navy. Valid 916 through 924. Excludes in-store clearance. Five per day per store. Select styles. Jean giveaway in stores only. See stores for details. Ah, the bull elk's bugle, one of nature's most wondrous sounds. That is not a bull elk, that's Kim. Her RV sewage tank is spewing all over her camper. Way, way out in the middle of elk country. Yep, there's an elk. And that's Kim. It's wild out there. When it gets too wild, Progressive has your RV covered. Quote today at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Okay, so we're back with Marcus Delage, Yanti Turang, and Joanna Hale McGill. And Joanna, I have a question for you. What's up? About Indonesia. Okay. If, oh. there, if there really is a God, why is he letting all these people starve <laughs> and go hungry? You know, the same reason. I don't know. I can't answer that. You're not about to put me in the cross. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking why that did you the really people in, know, but Why do people in Egypt want to wanna stay in Egypt? Like, I don't, I I don't, don't know, but, get it. But if there were... Is there some sort of explanation for someone who's religious? There has to be an explanation for why people are suffering. God allows things to happen for his own reasons. I'm not, he's God. He knows the reason and why there has to be some type of great blessing at the end of it. I don't know. Just the, the same reason why I endure, why, why you endure the way you endure. And then at the end, it's like, oh God, that's why I went through all that. So prime example. My Instagram account was hacked last week. Had no idea why somebody was sending me threatening messages and all kind of crap. If you want this to stop, I'll send you, send me um, an iTunes gift card. I'm like, what does that do with anything? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, whatever. So he kept sending the threats that I just, I just blocked them and ignored them and reported it. Well, then two days later, I didn't know that I had made the premiere of Cloak and Dagger singing. And I was like, so this is why it was hacked? So it's like the enemy always knows when the blessing is coming. So he comes and he rears his ugly head to try to get you all focused and deter you from the blessing that's going to come at the end. So that was my story. Like, that's why I'm like, I don't understand why am I going through this? I don't bother anybody. I'm just, I'm a little artist. I'm trying to, you know, do what I got to do. But so why am I being attacked? So that's the question. Like, why are they being attacked? God, what are you going to do to step in and help these people? What, what is Cloak and Dagger? Cloak and Dagger is a Marvel comic series. You're in it? I, uh, I was on the premiere last Thursday. It premiered the, the season premiere, I guess if I'm saying that right. It's a Episode, TV show. It was a TV show that comes on wow. Freeform. It's an ABC family show. And I sang for the opening of the premiere. And then that was like a minute and 48 seconds. And then they brought me back again and showed the actual scene at the poll. It was a scene about uh, trafficking young women. And so I actually sang in that part as well. I was like, I made the premiere. Like, okay, I didn't know I was making the premiere. But that was really big stuff. Like, millions of people actually saw that. They actually no saw kidding. that. Yeah. yeah. Did you see it, Marcus? I did not. No. Do you I watch TV not. with your kids? <laughs> uh, sometimes. But, you know, I have a five-year-old daughter, so we're watching... Uh, the Barbie yeah. in, in the Winks. Uh, <laughs> stuff like that. What, <laughs> what goes on in that show? Uh, it's some fairies and they, they got some they got some pretty wings and so she uh, is kinda into wings, so wings. she puts them on. Right. The name of the show is the Winks. But the ladies the little girls the they wear winks. They wear wings. <laughs> wow. And uh, and she has quite a few pairs of wings. That's you know? pretty cute. Yes, uh, Does she make you dress up and stuff and fly nah, around? No, not yet. She hasn't made me dress up. She hasn't uh, <laughs> painted my face or put lipstick on or anything like that. But I hear it's coming. It's coming. Oh, really? um, 
<laughs> but you know what? I'm going to let her do it, though. Yeah, yeah right. absolutely. 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 So during the day, because you're the sharpest looking guy we've ever had, actually, <laughs> on Happy Hour, I'll just have to tell you that. If you, if you want to go to our website, if, you have, if you're not watching this on Facebook or you listen to this as a podcast, take a look at Jill LaFleur's photos of Marcus on our website, mm-hmm. itsneworleans.com, or on our Facebook page. This is a great outfit. Your tie is gorgeous, know, t- isn't it? Look at that matching. tie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, the socks too. You just can't look see them. Look at the socks. Take a look at the socks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the whole thing is great. Yeah. Well, where, you do know, you, where do you go shopping? <laughs> um, most of my suits come from uh, Joseph A. Bank. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Wow. Most of them. And the ties come from, uh, you know, kind of everywhere. But a lot of them are from Amazon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just ah, kind of find well, something I like. See, find Paisley is sort of back, I guess. Hey, my wife. Did it ever go my out? wife introduced me to Paisley. Uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe, maybe when we first met, and I was uh, apprehensive to wear it. Uh, but now I have a. Now you trust her finally after ten years. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> How did that's you right. meet? Actually? That's right. Um, it's kind of a Katrina story. I was a senior. Um, Joanna went to a school in the Seven Ward, and, and I went to a real university uptown, Xavier University. Okay. Um, no, we're not going to do this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so do those, those, those schools are rivals. Yes, they um, are. I, I didn't so, know that. So, so, I went, huh? so I went. So I went to the school uptown, the real university. <laughs> um, but I was a senior, and uh, Katrina came, and I moved to uh, Lafayette, um, and I actually met my wife. At UL Lafayette. Okay. My wife is a New Orleanian as well. I, I didn't know her in high school. Uh, I met her in college, and uh, so she was in. She was at UL already. Yeah. And then you yeah. evacuated to UL. I evacuated. She started. So, see, there was a reason. Do you think, a reason. Did, did God do that? He set that up. Okay. He set it up. Is he doing everything? He's, he works. It, it has all to be. works out. It all works, it all works out. out. It has to be the orchestrator of it all. Now, are you a church-going, God-fearing person as well? So I'm a uh, Catholic. Been uh, born, raised Catholic all my life. Went to uh, Saint Ol, then went to Xavier, which are both Catholic schools. So you went uh, to Saint Ol, the world-famous Saint Ol. Went to Saint Ol. That's right. I went to Saint Ol. I, I taught there for a number of you years. Taught there. That's what I, I served as athletic director for a few years. Nice. Come on. Yeah. Wow. St. Aug is a... Uh, Are you a lot older than you look or something? I don't know. I'm, I'm 35. <laughs> is there anything? Wow. I, I started, right out of, started right out of college uh, teaching at St. Aug. Uh, <laughs> actually hadn't even got a diploma yet, and they hired me. Oh, really? um, wow, okay. And I had to take a day off to Did go to have... graduation practice. <laughs> <laughs> you you so, told them you didn't have a diploma, and they still hired you. They knew it was coming. That's pretty <laughs> interesting. So you were an athletic director, did you say? Yeah, I was athletic director for three wow. years. Um, That's impressive. And now you're an attorney with your own firm. Yeah, I have my own so, practice, and I also work with a, uh, with a, a real prominent attorney in the city. His name is John Fuller. Okay. Um, so do you, do you know him, Joanna? Yes, I know John Fuller. How do you Fuller. know him? Have you, no, I've never, he's never represented wall? me in any way. <laughs> Let me just put that disclaimer out there. He's it's never just, represented you just me. just because he's famous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, so I work with him, and uh, most of our practices, uh, most of my practice is criminal defense. Right. Um, so I, I, you know, have a lot of uh, clients who are accused of committing crimes. Not and, uh, guilty. Absolutely not guilty. Right. Not guilty. You have they, to believe that, right? Well, you know, the law affords them the uh, the presumption of innocence. So mm-hmm. when they walk into court, they're presumed to be innocent until or, and unless right. that guilt is proved beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. Did you work for the DA at some point as well, though? I did. It didn't last long. Uh, maybe three months, maybe. Three months? It did. That is not long. You know, sometimes you, uh, I'm appreciative for the opportunity, but sometimes you recognize when things are not a good fit. You feel like you're on the wrong side? Uh, I felt like I knew a lot of people that were in orange, and uh, <laughs> I'd rather help them than, uh, mm-hmm. than be the one that's, right. that's prosecuting right. them. I felt like I'd do more, more help on the defense side mm-hmm. of things, and you know, so far in my career, that's, that's worked out well for me. You know what's awesome. interesting, though? Yanti, you have a question about that? No. What, what, what do you think it is that makes people want to be the prosecutor? That um, is I have no idea. Um, well, you, were, I, you were there at the coalface. What? So sometimes that's a, uh, it's, it's a big in, in, in employer in the city. So they, they, they have to hire a lot of attorneys. And if you want to do criminal defense and you want to get trial experience, being a prosecutor is certainly a way right. to, to get that done. Because a lot of those prosecutors at some point, they, they come to the good side and they are defense attorneys at some point. Um, 
So I, I think that may be one reason. Another reason could be, I mean, you know, we live in New Orleans where, you know, unfortunately there, there's a lot of crime. Um, and those prosecutors, they want to protect the citizens of the city as they should. Right. What percentage of people who you see are actually not guilty? And what percentage of them do you get, do you get off? I mean, because you're a good lawyer. So, uh, or because the evidence is bad. So I try not to use the term get off because it implies that somebody did something okay. um, that they may or may not have done. Um, and it's not my job to judge them. It's my job to defend them. The Constitution provides for that. And the other thing is sometimes we have to make sure that the prosecutor does their job and they play by the rules. Mm -hmm. sometimes, right, right. sometimes they don't. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, and when they don't, we have to, we have to point that out and, and let the judge know and, and then we uh, proceed from there. What do you feel about the whole system based on the ability of someone like you, though? The, the only thing that stands between someone spending a lot of time in jail and not is your ability. Is that what kind of a system is that? Really? So sometimes that's the truth. Uh, um, there are obviously different skills level and skill sets of, of attorneys, and if you have a better one, then obviously you have a better a better chance. Right. Um, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the law provides that you can have an attorney. Like you get a free attorney. You know, if you can't afford one, um, and you know, talking about public defenders, those are good attorneys. They're like, overworked, right. but they're they're, they're good attorneys. Like I'm not going to tell you that they they don't know what they're doing or they don't know the law. I ask them questions. Right. They absolutely know what they're doing. Unfortunately, um, the people in the city, in this city in particular, they, they can't afford um, to hire a private attorney. So the public defenders, they, they're just, they have so many cases, they just, right. they may not be able to give it all the attention they need, but they are excellent attorneys. How do you feel about the system, you know, having years of experience and obviously having a passion for what you're doing and... Uh, yeah, how do you feel about the system above you? Can you work hard and, and do the noble thing to push something that you feel like is true through? And do you usually feel like you succeed in those in those moments? Or so one thing uh, you have to do is fight, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you have to fight against injustice. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to fight against it. Uh, Joanna was talking earlier about being in picking you in Mississippi, where where racism is prevalent. Mm -hmm. I think she mentioned. My mother may have been a, a, a sharecropper. Um, and you, you see them, so, them same racial undertones uh, mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I mean, there may mm -hmm. not be slavery in the form that right. it was, you know, back in the day. But today, slavery exists. It's there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's you see, system. and I see it every day. Mm -hmm. um, I see young men and women uh, in, in orange, in shackles. And, and the majority of those people are, are people of color. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so sl slavery is still here. It, actually, it, it, it's just changed forms. Hmm. Yeah. I, was, I also work as a nurse at UMC in the ER. And the other day, a uh, prisoner had came in for a laceration to the head. And it was, you know, I take care of lots of patients, lots of different things, like it's okay. But when he came in in his orange jumpsuit, shackled. Mm -hmm. Like, beyond. The guy was in his 60s. Like, get a grip, you know? Like, treat this person like a human. Like a human being. And the prison wardens just, like, I don't know what it was. There was just something about how there was this, like, power thing going on. And, and the, the, the thing that happened, like, we fixed his, the laceration in his head and it was okay. And then he couldn't find his glasses. I mean, I wear glasses. And no one cared. They, he was like, the glasses were in the helicopter to get me here, and where are my glasses? And there was just no respect. Wow. There was no time. I mean, this guy's probably been in jail for, who knows, almost 20 years, like, completely institutionalized. And then still, like, even when he's bleeding out of his head, there's no respect for a man who was like, I can't actually see right now. Could somebody help me with my glasses? Wow. Like, where are they? And it was just so heavy and then to shackle him to the bed like oh my goodness it was just yeah I mean I have a lot of respect for your work <laughs> and, yeah. and, and it's because of stories like that that uh, Andrew I told you we have to fight yeah. we have to fight like we, have like, to like, fight. we don't have a choice yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. it is uh, it's incumbent upon us to to fight and to fight hard and, and, and just to keep doing it we yeah. gotta keep going you know, I was, a, uh, I was an inspector back in the day I was a health inspector for the state for a long time and I was the one in charge of inspecting the prisons. So before they got the new prison, I would inspect the old OPP. 
and it was an experience like none others. Like I don't ever want to go to jail. It was the conditions. It was the, the, There was no. Some of the cells had no running waters. Like they wouldn't clean, but the stuff they'd given to clean with it didn't really clean anything. And then the toilets, and then you had mattresses where they would cut out the 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 foam or whatever on the inside, and then they'd have to put it on the floor to soak up the sewer water. And then they're stepping in it, wow. and it was like feces oh and urine. And I was like. How are they living like this? I mean, I had over 40 pages of reports, and it was like, you can't do anything because it's the state against the state. What do you mean? Like, these people are human. So what am I going for? Like, what is the point? Right. You just go and just write your report. So that that didn't sit well with me at all, and it was just like, they're still human. They're still human beings. Why do we have a why do we have an inspection a health yeah, system if they don't do anything about it? It's another subject, another topic off the mic. Off the <laughs> really? Mic. Can't. Do, you still, off the mic. do you still do that? No, no, no. My passion is music. Okay, music so and theater and television. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm still I'm still a public health inspector yeah. by heart. But you're, so you, you have a degree in public health? I have health a degree in public health. I have oh, a master's okay. in public health, yes. <gasps> so do you. So we should talk. We yeah. have to talk. So, so, Got you got strangers in here and yeah. so many I know. commonalities. You that. So Andrew's getting his guitar and we're gonna make him play a song for us. Well Andrew's getting his guitar, so you talked yeah. about how you met your wife. So let me show you how I met my husband. Let's tell us. This man, I was in AutoZone getting something to fix the light on my car. Uh-huh. And this other guy was talking to me. I had my long braids, my little my little ghetto shorts. Summertime. Yes. <laughs> gotcha. I'm with so you. he came You're wearing your ghetto shorts. I wear my ghetto shorts. That was back in the day. So I was standing there in line waiting, and my husband walks up to me and takes my phone off my hip and puts his number in the phone wow. and says, nice. call me when you're done with this clown and put it back and oh, walked off. Dang. Wow. <laughs> and, look, and, and look how that worked out. <laughs> and I was like, so this I was is, like, so, mm. so this is my question. When did you call him? That day or like later? You know, the woman called it like, I'm not calling him for three days. No, I called him that night. I called him that night. Wow. See, see, wow. you knew. You knew. <laughs> and, and God put him there. Yes, he did. Would you, Marcus, would you have the balls to <laughs> that do that? Is so Even good. if you thought of it? Uh, probably not. <laughs> no, I, would not. I, I don't Andrew, think so. No <laughs> chance, Me neither. He was that, bold. He yeah. took the phone and put his number and was like, call me when you're done with that clown. And put my and phone back. And what did you think? Did you think, I wonder how many women he's done like, that to today? I, know, I was just like, like damn. <laughs> that man, that man, that man saw what he liked. He saw what yeah. he But you he didn't wanted, suspect that he, he was doing that to it. women all over town. No, I didn't. I felt special. He saw he something made me in feel you. special. Wow. <laughs> Even with my ghetto hair and braids, I felt <laughs> special. <laughs> that is amazing. How long ago was that now? This was in April of 2005. We met in April. We evacuated together. Um, wow. For Katrina, and we've been together ever since. Well, Katrina's had quite an impact around it's this time. That was my Katrina one, love story. One way or another. Everybody's yeah, yeah, Katrina yeah. was a, yeah, it definitely changed my life. That was a thing. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Okay, Andrew, what are you playing for us? Man, I was hoping I had, after this conversation, I had another idea, but uh, it's the wrong tuning, so I'll play the tune I was thinking. Uh, I think I played you a draft of this years ago, but here's another draft. Okay. Clementine seats by your kitchen window. Come tomorrow, I will plant them in the ground. I still want to believe that we reap what we sow. I just thought that we'd be further along by now. Come the spring rain, and bring the spring cold. Brings the lavender inside your dressing drawer. I was a fool to buy you roses on my way to your front door. When you get flowers from me, you should know that I planted the seeds. I believe. This love don't come easy
I shed a couch in Tampa Where the cattle hula hound Laid Miss Louisiana But not enough to turn back around Come a spring rain, come a spring cold I will clear them from this plight I'm tending to If the freeze comes, it covers over I will see it like I mean it Cause I do When you get flowers from me You'll know that I planted the seeds I believe this love Don't come easy Pretty boys would buy you roses On their way to your front door When you get flowers from me You will know that I planted the seeds I believe We Everybody. That was so great. We say sex or tough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Damn straight. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, Andy, what did you think of that? That's uh, incredible. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Who like do you play it. with? I, like it. Uh, I got a band. We, we do a little trio thing. We'll be at the French Quarter Fest this weekend. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. What's your band? Uh, just my name, Andrew Duhon. You know, a songwriter who uh, hasn't uh, been clever enough to think of a band name. So it's just my Andrew name. Duhon. <laughs> Andrew Duhon. Andrew Duhon. That sounds nice. good to me. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? I like it. That's a good, that's a better version than last week. Oh, good. Thanks. It sounded more sophisticated. You know what? You know what? If, it's it's funny. Like uh, you know, this stuff. It's like there. So you know what I was thinking about when I was working on this tune again is uh, there's a podcast now that's uh, a diary. It's like grown people in New York reading their old diaries or like found mm. journals wow. from their childhood, and it kind of felt like which is funny when they read it, right? It's hilarious when, yeah. they're, when they're reading like. I'm, I said hi to Jenna today. I'm pretty sure she likes me now. You know, just <laughs> stuff like that. Um, but it's also interesting to like rework these confessional sort of songs that were about something else, and now oh, you're yeah, using any meaning. yeah, it's like this love sentiment. You know, that's it's never perfect, and you're always working on it. So mm. there's always something else to say about it. And uh, but musically, yeah. that sounded more sophisticated than it did when you played it last time. Interesting. Too. Yeah, do you I don't think? know. Is it different? Uh, or is I it think it just may, maybe it it's similar. Maybe you're a better player. I'm a better player, maybe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we've, been, we've been at this a long time. Yeah, we've been, yeah, we've been doing this I for a while. I felt that in my in my in my Noah. I felt it in my Noah. Mm. Felt that. What does it mean? <laughs> no, I felt it deep minutes. within. Huh. So it's, it's time for you to play another song. Again, That's right. I'm yes. another song. Yeah. Okay, what are you so gonna this do? This is this song is entitled "Live, Laugh, Love." Mm. So you know that's good advice. Uh, live, laugh, love. So mm. with everything, you can start it. So with everything going on in the world today, we can just live, laugh, laugh and just and love. love one another. I promise it to be a much better place. Sounds like a good tattoo. It, <laughs> <laughs> I think I said I was going to get that. Live, laugh, love? Yeah, I'm going to get it. Hey, you, where are you going to put it? I don't know. That's a good question. I was what thinking about down the side. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's going to hurt. Hey. Pain is temporary. That's, That's right. <laughs> can, can we steal this music of yours off the internet? You somewhere? can. It's on my website and on all digital music outlets. It's there as well. And the, what is your website called? JoannaHaleMcGill.com JoannaHaleMcGill.com Yeah, yeah. Turn it up, come on. Oh, 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 yes. 
Sometimes when you're going through And it's hard to see your way out The Father will remind you That it's easier just to smile There's someone out there that's going through And sinking deep within But a smile can uplift them And bring the dark days to an end If you will just live, laugh, love Come on and just live So we can have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. And then he gave us his only son so we can live and just be free. Now put a little bit of love in your heart. Rejoice and just be glad. Don't let the world get you down because you will see it ain't that bad if you just live yeah, or live. <laughs> Come on and just live. Yes. Love. It ain't that yes. bad if you just live. come on and live, yeah. come on and laugh, come on and love, yes, yes. Live. 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 live, While we plan against each other, just reach out and lend a helping hand and Stop hating your fellow brother and lead him into this Christian jam now be a shining example, there's no time for compromise Get on board this Christian train and sit back and enjoy the ride Come on and just live, live, laugh, alright Why don't you just come on and just, come on and just It ain't that bad Come on and live, come on and laugh, come on and love Yes, live Man, it's what you make it. Ain't no mistake, and we're all destined for greatness. It's a beautiful world, just spread love in it. Smiles and hugs in it, no judging in it. Come on and let the sun shine on us. Live, laugh, love, take it one time from us. You see some better days in your lifetime, plus you give somebody else a lifeline. Come on and say live, and say laugh, laugh. You gotta love a lot. Come on, come on now. Live, laugh. Just live, just laugh, just love, yes, come on, and live, and laugh, and love, oh, 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 yeah, yes, live, laugh, love, we just want to live, laugh, and love, we can go ahead and fade that, live, he's on beat, Oh, yeah. Come on, take us to Jess. church. All right. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Joanna Hale oh, McGill. Sure. Live, laugh, love. Yes. Right, well, that's my jam. Live, laugh, that's love. That's mine. Too, no. Again. Again. Man, that's that's I mean, two. You're two for two you today, baby. You can see two what happened two. around this table and around the whole Everything. restaurant. Everybody is happier now. Yes. So here's the question for you. If we really believe this stuff, yes, okay, this stuff, <laughs> this stuff okay, this are stuff. we going to be happy like this all the time? No, no, uh, no. you're not going to be happy all the time. Oh, bummer. It's I, not going to be. You, so it's you, only for the three minutes that we're singing this song. <laughs> I thought can, maybe this, you can download this, the whole album and, well, yeah, and you'll be happy no, all the time. About, I'm talking about new sound, same God, like. Outside, because it, it lives in you. It yes, lives in are you, you really happy like this all the yes, time? Yes, indeed. My friend can attest to that. Now, sometimes I might have a day where, you know, wait a minute, what is Joanna doing? But overall, this is me. I don't okay. do I do not do coffee. So I don't do caffeine. I'm always high it? like this all the how time. How do we do it? Suppose Yanti and I and Marcus and Andrew, and we all, we want to be like you. Okay. Okay. I want to be as happy as you are. Okay. What, what is the secret? What do you actually have to do? You have to really believe deep down that there really is a God who's looking after you. You do. You have to oh, believe deep down. You have to believe it and you know it. You that's why to. you have a problem? I can't yeah. really get to that point. That's why not? Thing. How do you, do you... Have you got to that point? I'm, I'm, I'm there. Thankful. You're there. I'm there. Okay. Absolutely. Are you there, Young? Did you really Absolutely. believe that? I I understand the happiness. Yes. But Me too. it's because I'm thankful. Grateful. Grateful, grateful every day. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Okay. No. 
<laughs> no, no. Marcus, are you as happy as Joanna? Really, I, like this, like over. I, I don't know if my personality is, is bubbly as, as as she is, but I, I think I'm. You're content. Fundamentally no, no, no. I was about to tell you, I'm not content. That's 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 almost like settling for something. I'm, I'm happy. Okay. I'm certainly happy with where I am in life. I'm happy with who I married. I'm happy with my kids. I'm happy with my job. I'm happy with the, the work that I do. Um, I understand it's a struggle and it's a fight. I'm happy with the tie, tie I put on today. Yeah. Yes, that tie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, um, I, I'm happy. I'm a happy man. Okay, so absolutely. You, and do you attribute that to God or Jesus? You, you got to give him the credit. You do. Uh, if, if not, then you, if not, then you're almost being selfish and saying that I did this myself, and I, I'm just the vessel. Okay. I'm just the vessel. So Somebody else is. If I uh, don't have that feeling, is that? Am I responsible for that? So what do you believe? That's my question. I don't disbelieve anything. I don't disbelieve that you're right. I don't say you're wrong. No, I'm just asking what I'm you believe. A, I don't, I'm open-minded. I would love to believe that. Wouldn't you, Andrew? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. How do we do it? How do you get you to know, that point there, where you just been, go for it? There's been a lot of... For me to be 34, I've experienced a lot. I've experienced... Uh, abusive relationships. I've experienced near death experiences. Have you? Yeah, I have. I'm not making this up. Um, you know, we're so we got time for one of those. <laughs> you I, know, I, I was I, I was I was <laughs> dating a guy a long time ago, and I don't know what it was. He literally tried to kill me. Mm. Um, literally choked me out. You know, mm. but um, <laughs> and I was able to overcome that situation um, simply by you know just believing and asking God. Okay, if, if there's a God, I need you to get me out of this situation mm. because. I this was, is while the guy was choking. I, I was behind, literally behind the seat with his hand around my neck and kicking. And I remember, I recall kicking out the passenger window in the car. And it's like when I kicked out the window, something snapped in him and he stopped. And so he thought I was dead. And I remember sitting up, I was coughing. I'm like, oh my God, he tried to kill me. And so when I looked at him, he thought he was crying. He was like, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to do it. I was like, do what? I'm not dead. And he got so angry. He was like, you're not dead. I was like, no, I'm not dead. See, 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 God, so, <laughs> God wasn't finished with her. He had more. No, like more. I was I was supposed to be in. I had one foot in the grave and one out. Like I was done. And he so we got back in the car and he drove. Got back very, in the car. Got back in the car. I didn't get out of the car. I was, I was like 19. I was terrified. And so he got in the car and he drove really fast up 510 back to his mom's house and he was cursing and screaming. And I was just sitting like, oh my God, like I really need you to get me out. Like this dude is nuts. And I think it was another situation after that. I didn't leave because I was young and dumb. I was out of convenience. But the next situation, I actually had the strength enough to leave. Yeah. Oh, I've been through a lot. But it wasn't in my own strength. Why, why wouldn't you blame it. God for putting you in that terrible position? Why would you only give him the credit for getting you out He of gave it? me all the signs that was there. I just ignored the signs. All the signs were there. I just ignored okay. it out of convenience. All right. Andrew, how are we going to get this <laughs> to this point? Maybe if I choke I think, you, maybe maybe, maybe we could admit maybe, maybe maybe we could admit that art is the beautiful uh, medium that can help us all understand that all she's talking about is living, laughing, and loving. Love it. That's it. Live, laugh, love. <gasps> we you did know? it. Okay, we've got to the the point where we can accept live. Live, laugh, love. Live, laugh, love is the key. Did you write that? I did write that song. Yes. Did you write the other one as well? I will have to go. Okay, great. Yes. That's all. I, I love the tunes. Yeah, yeah. Really yeah. Nice. yeah, you're a great songwriter. Thank as well. you. On top of everything else. Does God do that? Do you take any credit for having talent? No, he gave me the talent. He did. Absolutely. I have to agree with that one. <laughs> he gave me the hey, talent. Hey, listen, Happy Hour has been brought to us today by Nola Pens, everybody. This here pen in my hand is the only pen made from a fallen Audubon Park live oak. Amazing. This was originally... One of God's trees in Audubon Park that he decided he'd have enough of and he sent a bolt of lightning down and destroyed it. But this guy, this guy came along and made pens out of them and you can now buy them at nolapens.com. Basics on Magazine Street near Jefferson Avenue sells fine lingerie and basic swimming gym sells a full range of fashion swimsuits with workout and yoga clothes. Namaste Couture has one-of-a-kind natural gemstone jewelry, soulful-inspired clothes, and heart-fueled intentions. Designed by April Love, you can save 20% on all jewelry at namastecouture.com by entering happy hour in the coupon code. And if you go to hangoverdestroyer.com, it's called hdestroyer.com, actually. You can buy Hangover Destroyer, which is the only all-natural product medically proven to prevent a hangover. If you write happy hour in the coupon code, you get 30% off of your first order of Hangover Destroyer. And thank you, too, to the positive... 
Vibrations Foundation, who create and encourage community through the development and preservation of the arts, music, culture, and heritage. And if you'd like to be a member of our Patreon family and get access to all kinds of free and exclusive stuff, go to patreon.com and search for It's New Orleans Happy Hour. And for as little as $1 a month, you too can be a member of our Patreon family. And if we want, to, are we going to, Joanna, are we going to see you at at Jazz Fest or I'm not French gonna Quarter be Fest? at Jazz Fest. I'm not gonna be at French Quarter Fest. No. You would I'm be a not. you would be a natural at Jazz well, Fest hey, in the gospel tent. If you? you know somebody to put in a good word for me, I'm all for it. How could you be like <laughs> artist of the year and the steeple award and everything you, in the You got the you jazz know fire some behind people, you going yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Some Let people are not that, received you know? in their own hometown and that's weird to me. I have to that's go totally out of town. Weird. Yeah, that's weird. But that's you know, that's 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 kind of what it is now. It's Marcus sad, might be able to make a call for yes, you. Yes, Marcus, to make something call. happen. Marcus, you've got to know like somebody, that. don't you? i got, got to know make somebody. Yeah. I agree. you got to. Okay. So, Marcus, where do we find you? Do we find you online if you want if you want to uh, track yeah. you down? <laughs> sure. Uh, thelargelaw.com, D-E-L-A-R-G-E-Law.com. Um, or you can just come to Tulane Broad. I'm there every day. Mm. You are. Cool. Okay. You're the best dressed guy at Tulane Broad. I try to be. Um. You definitely have got to be. <laughs> and Yanti Touring, we can find you at Learn to Live. Yeah, www.learntoliveglobal.org. Learntoliveglobal.org. Yep. Okay. Well, this has been a really stellar group of people, Thank you. hasn't it? This has been really nice. This has been a great day. Thank great you so day. much, Thank everybody, for, for joining invite. us. Thanks Thank for you. Having Thank us. Yeah. Thank you so much. That's been Happy Hour for another week. The producer of our show is Graham DePonte. April Stolf is our associate producer. And Monique Pyle and Christian Honor are our music producers. Thomas Walsh is our technical director. And our Facebook Live feed director who's put this whole thing on Facebook. And you can go find this on our It's New Orleans Facebook page is Asher Griffith. Andrew Searock. Searock is our fact checker and social media connector. And our theme music was written by and is currently being played by Mitch Foreman. If you'd like to be on our show and you can stay upright for about 60 minutes while drinking alcohol, drop us a line. Our address is on our website, it's neworleans.com. You can find many other happy hours there as well. There's some other shows that we make here, including Out to Lunch with Peter Rusciutti, live from Commander's Palace, Louisiana Eats with Poppy Tucker, and our award-winning podcast about death called Death the Podcast. You can find other great Louisiana podcasts as well at itsacadiana.com and it's batonrouge.la. You can keep up with us on a bunch of time-sucking social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. On all of it, we're called It's New Orleans. You can find photos from this show on itsneworleans.com and on our It's New Orleans Facebook page and on our Instagram account. These photos were taken today by Jill Lafleur. You can find more of Jill's photos at lafleurphoto.com. If you listen to this on your favorite podcast app, thank you for subscribing to us. Take a moment if you have one to rate and review us that it helps other people find us if you're listening to us on spotify you can follow us and get happy hour delivered to you each week the show is recorded live today at wayfair on fred street uptown new orleans happy hours a production of i know broadcasting for it's new orleans.com for andrew duhon everyone else around the table here at wayfair and back at our office at i know broadcasting thanks for joining us i'm grant morris i'll see you back here next week for more happy hour Your home is important. That's why GEICO helps make it easy to save on condo insurance. Because home is more than just a place. Home is where you took minimalism too far because there's only one chair in your entire condo and your only entertainment is one card. Not even a deck of cards, but a single card. And all your guests have to share one plate and one fork, but you're convinced that less stuff means more freedom. The GEICO Insurance Agency could help protect the overly minimalist broom closet you call home. Call GEICO and see how easy it is to switch and save on condo insurance.